this drama first began, I worried that young Jun's arrogant assurance of his own perfection would eventually grate on my nerves, but happily, he only gets cuter every time he touts his own perfection. I assumed he really did believe the things he says, but now it feels more like he's letting us in on a joke, and it never gets old. And even with all his flaws, how can me so not love a guy who's been putting her needs first for a lot longer than she's even realized? Episode 10 recap Young Jun answers in his sleep when Miso calls him, Sung Hye on Opa, then he wakes up all the way. He doesn't say anything, so Miso asks if his name used to be Lee Sung Hye on. She tells him about his mother saying, Our Hye on, when they spoke of the kidnapping, but Young Jun claims he just reflexively answered her voice in his sleep. He takes her home, and when he's by himself later, he thinks about how hard Miso cried while they were locked up. He sighs, you don't need to know. I don't want to make you cry ever again. In the morning, Miso visits Young Jun's mother again to ask if Young Jun has ever changed his name. Mom says tensely that Miso must have misheard her say, Hyun, but Miso insists that she heard correctly. Mom says firmly that the boy she was kidnapped with was Sung Yun, and that she doesn't know anyone named Hyun. Determined to get some answers, Miso goes to Sung Yun and asks if he remembered anything after reading her diary, like what the kidnapper looked like. He says he doesn't remember anything, and that he wonders if it's not so much that he can't remember, but that he subconsciously won't remember because it was too traumatic. He goes to get her diary, and Miso thinks that his memories sound like things he's heard from someone else. While she waits, she sees photographs of two young boys on a table, and she recognizes one of them as her opa. When Sung Yoon returns, she asks him which of the photos is him, and he points to the other boy, the one Miso doesn't recognize. GR is thrilled that her work commute is only 5 minutes now that she's in her new place, but she balks when the office team expects her to throw a housewarming party. They pressure her into having a party this weekend, but Miso politely declines when invited, saying that she has a family obligation. Now that she knows who her opa really is, Misa has another concern. Why is everyone telling her Sung Yoon was the one who was kidnapped? She wonders if Yang Jun really lost his memories, and if she should pretend not to know the truth. She gives Young Jun his schedule for the day as usual, and he asks her to come to his place after work. Lol, he looks so innocent when she's nervous to go to his house after dark. He asks what she could possibly be thinking of, and whether her imagination is running away with her. He says he just wants to organize his personal library, acting all cool and sophisticated until me suppose, of course, tilde opa tilde, and he nearly falls out of his chair. He asks her to say it again, and the soft, sweet way she calls him open makes him fall for her all over again. He says he'll allow her to keep calling him that, but she chirps that she's over it now, and his dismayed expression is priceless. Poor guy, Miso arrives at Young Jun's place a little early that night, surprising him in his bathrobe and not much else. He covers his embarrassment by saying that he doesn't want to shock her with his muscular physique, and as he goes to dress, Miso gets a glimpse of the scars on his ankles again. Pil Nam calls, and when she learns where Miso is, she calls Young Jun a selfish jerk again. Young Jun overhears Miso telling her sister that he's not selfish and that he's better than she thinks he is, and she finally says to stop worrying about their relationship. She starts to cry again after they hang up, and Young Jun realizes how much it upsets her that her family opposes them. He's confused, having thought that they'd be happy to have him in the family. Naturally, he assumes that they feel burdened by his perfection, and he chastises his reflection for not being more imperfect. While Miso organizes his documents, a Young Jun tells her that he heard her on the phone with her sisters, and he promises to calm their concerns soon with his fatal aura. He makes Miso laugh, but he's serious about wanting to convince her and Miso that Miso won't cry anymore. He drives her home later just to spend a little more time with her, and he asks her on a date the following day. She says she has a family gathering this weekend, and Young Jun asks if it's the same trip she and her sisters go on every year. Before she goes inside, Misa reaches into her purse and pulls out a finger heart. OMG so cute. Young Jun reaches up to pluck the moon out of the sky for her, and Misa runs inside, embarrassed at their cheesiness, so he blows it up to her window like a kiss. Yushik comes to Young Jun's house later that night, puffing and sighing until Young Jun asks what's wrong. Yushik says he saw his wife with another man, and Young Jun says he should have done better when they were together. 
Yushik protests that he bought her anything she wanted, made her breakfast, and was even good to her family. Young Jun perks up at the mention of family, and he asks what Yushik did to make his wife's family love him. Yushik quickly figures out that Young Jun wants to win over Mieto's family, and he tells him to act like one of the subcontractors who try to win his company's favor by proving his worth. Basically, he advises Young Jun to leave his pride at home. When they get to their island rental house, Mieso's sisters ask why she's so downcast. Pilnam guesses it's because of what she said about Yang Jun, but she repeats that she's just worried her little sister might date the wrong man. Miso says she just doesn't know him, but Pilnam changes the subject before Miso even finishes finishes talking. Back in town, the office team head to GR's for the housewarming party. The landlord suggests they take the party to the roof since GR's place is so tiny, and no matter how hard GR tries to discourage them from going up there, they insist. So she goes up first saying she needs to clean up, and she warns GWI Nam that a whole group from work is on their way to the roof. GWI Nam tries to run for his apartment, but the team comes upstairs too soon and he ends up diving under the bench to hide. They all make themselves comfortable and settle in for a long night of eating and drinking, with GWI Nam right underneath them. Miso and her sisters make this delicious-looking watermelon, soda concoction, but before she even gets a bite, Miso freezes to see Young Jun standing nearby, dressed to the nines. Miso pulls him aside to ask what's going on, and he says he wants to rid her sisters of their worries about him. Her sisters join them, and Mal he asks if, by chance, they're already dating. Young Jun says that they are, and that he knows Pil, Nam and Mal he are worried, but he assures them that he and Miso like each other very much. He invites them to a hotel suite he booked, and to have dinner at a fancy restaurant where he made reservations, but Pil Nam says that this is exactly why she worries, because he lives in a very different world from theirs. Young Jun offers to join them for dinner at the restaurant where they made their own reservations, and even Miso looks concerned. They head to an all-you-can-eat crab place, and the sisters tell Young Jun that the restaurant makes a profit because they use very cheap ingredients. Young Jun swears he can handle eating cheap crabs, even when Miso gives him one last chance to back out. Over dinner, Pil Nam asks the couple why they still refer to each other formally. On the spot, a Young Jun tells Miso Ya to call him Opa, Ha. He's a bit confused when Malhi keeps eating well after she's full, and Pil Nam says he must not understand why someone would want to get the most for their money. He takes it as a challenge and digs in, smiling determinedly as he stuffs his face. He looks so sick by the end of the meal that even the restaurant owner jokes that he'll probably never eat a crab again, he. Back at the house, Misa tries to send Yang Jun to his hotel to digest his huge meal, but he insists he's fine. Pil Nam and Mal He come outside dressed in ajima pants for clamming, and at Young Jun's confusion over why someone would work on the vacation, Pil Nam sneers that he probably has a personal chef to cook for him with the freshest ingredients. He decides to go clamming with them, saying he can do anything as long as he's with me so. Jia can't even enjoy her own housewarming party, knowing that GWI Nam is stuck under the bench, his stomach growling.